All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wherever you're tuning in in the world from, uh, we appreciate y'all rocking with us for another episode of The Green Room. Um, we are super excited to have uh, a friend and a brother come through and uh, chat with us today, Brother Anytime. Bariola. Uh, I will give him a, a chance to give a quick intro in a sec, but just an overview. If this is your first time uh, rocking with us and having a green room conversation, uh, what we're trying to do, uh, this is an extension of a class that we taught this past quarter uh, at Stanford University called Community College with the subheading of uh, designing black and brown spaces. Um, so these conversations are meant to democratize just information uh, access to kind of our stories and our journeys and the thought that if we could expose kind of the banana peels that we've slipped on and places that we bumped our heads in the past, um, you know, you, the youth, uh, the folks who are trying to break into these different industries, the, the geniuses that are out there might be able to get to where you're going <laughs> a little bit faster than how we've gotten to where we're going. So uh, we hope that you get some laughs out of this, that you'll just get some good vibes, that you'll learn some stuff and that you'll engage with our community uh, as we move into, into 2021. So with that, brother, uh, anytime, man, I'm super excited to have you come through. Um, why don't you just take a few minutes to give an intro and tell the people, uh, you know, what you're up to and passionate about, you know, where in the world you are, uh, how your family's doing and all that kind of thing. Yo, man, thank you, Brandon. I appreciate this, man. It's good to connect again. It's time in the green room. I am anytime burial, as you mentioned, uh, three-time best-selling author, seven-time award-winning author, uh, design conscious culture for a living. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to make the world, or at least my environment um, mm -hmm. and myself, a better person so I can exist in the world. And I, I try to communicate that message across the board. Uh, we have a creative agency called St. Miles that my son, who might make an appearance through here, <laughs> put him to take his nap, but you never know. Uh, he's the the co-founder of so we do like creative endeavors together he did mm -hmm. design the business card and like redesign the logo um we have corporate clients um it's, it's a really cool kind of gig we have a writer's house where we help writers get their work out it's just i mean really i'm I've, i think i've designed my life to kind of live it in the way that um i enjoy where i'm using like natural gifts mm -hmm. as a resource for, strictly for my purpose so um that's where I am right now. And I'm, I'm really appreciating the simplicity of those offerings and really the simplicity of life and myself. I'm, I'm such, you know, on the go, go getter, but I've been yeah. hunkered down, you know, in, in, uh, in quarantine and I'm really appreciating what's right in front of me more than anything. So what you'll start to see me exude as far as what I'm working on is a reflection of my real life. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm writing a book, book called Black Dad. I mentioned that is uh, my first title. And it was spawned out of just being with my kids 24 hours a day, not getting on planes, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, it, it's something that is a reflection of my reality. And uh, you'll see family highlighted more. You'll see my wife, you know, you'll see my kids, you'll see us, you'll see an, another extension of me and what kind of makes me, my, my motor run like what inspires me, which is essentially my family. So um, that's that's a lot of the messaging, you, messaging you'll be seeing, a lot of the content you'll be seeing from me, from hearing from me. Uh, Estelle and I have a, a show on Apple Music Hits. Um, it's called The Estelle Show. And every Wednesday I have conversations with her, just like we're having a conversation, like a living room conversation yeah. where we're just talking about love and talking about life and talking about real, real things, real solid, conscious culture that can be consumed by the general public, right? It's, yeah. it's a public consumption and it tastes good. It's, it's like, you know, you could go to the vegan store and get like a burger that tastes just like a burger, but it's good for you. There's no meat, you know, yeah. like we're delivering content in that way um, so that it can be enjoyed. It's not, it's not, it's no longer corny um, to be kind is necessary, right? It's no longer corny to be in love. It's not like we're, we're, we're reshifting and shaping the whole narrative. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. I mean, the, the facades, especially in 2020, have come down. Um, the assumptions that we've based a lot of how we thought we had to do things uh, yeah. have been like totally erased. And the fact that you get to uh, spend more time on the things that matter 
um, against the backdrop of losing so many people this year, uh, it's putting the things that are supposed to be the main things, it's, it's making them be the main things, or at least giving us the opportunity to make them the main things, which I think is one of the silver linings, um, you know, of, of this particular year. So, man, I appreciate those words. And um, I mean, I'd love to, you know, you mentioned Black Dad, I, I, I want to talk about new beginnings, I want to talk about um, fatherhood and parenthood. You've got a beautiful family and, um, Thank you, you know, man. you, you, you show, show them on Instagram and kind of want to, um, prop them up as, um, something that's to be more valued than that corporate promotion or to be more valued than, you know, the things that people have traditionally and historically been flaunting. So I, I really appreciate that, uh, about what you're, what you're saying you're going to do and what you've already shown to be doing, you know, in your grind for these last uh, handful of years, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to think like I, my brand's always been authentic to me. I, the Burial mm -hmm. Esque started with an extension of my lifestyle and, and making that available, right? Making etiquette something that people would be attracted to, making it um, digestible and palatable and, you know, dare I say, like tasty and, and desirable. So I've always kind of extended who I am in my work. And I, I, I I, I shift a lot, right? Like I, I, I pivot or I, I grow is a better word. And when I grow, it may look like I'm pivoting. And um, thank God, like, you know, folks have grown with me. So, so I feel, I don't feel right going back and talking about some of the other stuff yeah. that, that I've grown from, right? So, I mean, there was a natural hesitance because this is my family. Like mm -hmm. you said, you saw them on IG. And sometimes like um, when I'd be out and about, people know my wife like they don't know her but they're like hey how's Tish or whatever I'm like yo you, who are you <laughs> like, but you know I understand yeah. that there's a, a, a small sacrifice small price to pay um in transparency you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I'm pretty private but I, sh I show that part of me because it's it's um it's who I am man. this is where I am and it's it's also very beautiful mm -hmm. as you know it's tough it's a lot of people um don't see it for what it is. I just kind of want to give it its its proper framing. Uh, but also, I mean, I'm growing through this stuff too. I'm going through it and growing through it. Like I, I am literally growing with <laughs> with y'all, and I'm yeah. finding right away. So I might be close to an issue. I might be close to some. I might still like be rec in recovery or still healing from something. I'm talking about it with y'all, but I'm yeah. learning. I'm taking these insights and these learnings. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm delivering them as content and, and you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it shapes, continues to shape because a lot of the young homies hit me all the time and they're just like, you know, I, I love the, 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 the messaging you're on. I love what you talk about. Yeah. Um, showing family is, is important and showing love is important and giving that and being that. So that's my through line, man. Like if it's not, if it doesn't have eternal implications and if it's not, if it's not love, I can't really, I can't really be a part of it. And that doesn't mean that I, I have to be receiving love because it's, the love is supposed to, because love is like, it doesn't, whoever the recipient is of your love, it, it's not contingent upon anything but you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you decide to love people regardless of who they are and how they are, right? Yeah. Like, like love is something that it, it, it disarms and it's something that has nothing to do with the other person and has everything to do with you right mm -hmm. um so it's always my goal to just give love and to be love and, and and that's a difficult thing it's a difficult charge for us but um yeah. that's that's where i am and that's why you see family because they're at the helm of that god family that's that's what i'm about I'm about the people yeah. too i'm trying to be love uh and i one of the growth kind of things from this past week just for me is kind of understanding how much presence just period plays kind of a factor in in ways that I didn't appreciate or realize. Like I would, you know, I get home from work, maybe head upstairs and just decompress for a little while while the kids are on the couch, you know, yeah. doing something or drawing or watching something uh, of a show. And uh, my wife, a couple of weeks ago, she's like, why don't you like decompress and just sit with like your proximity um, mm -hmm to them, even if you're not conversing with them, matters a lot. And uh, she's a teacher, she sent me a couple YouTube videos and I watched um, 
a few child psychologists talk about how, you know, even if words can't be understood and expressed, you know, for my two-year-old, for example, um, just you being there and the comfort of a little cub, like if I'm the head lion and then these are cubs just playing around, if the parent is nowhere near, um, the cubs play differently. They're on higher alert. They're on like this different wave. And it's so powerful for me just this week to understand that my presence as a father, even if I'm not conversing, uh, matters a lot in psychological safety and like how the development of young minds and young bodies are starting to form. So it's a, it's a whole thing, man. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a bet, bro. I, I totally understand. I'm, I'm with you. And I try to be intentional about things like that. Um, man, we all need a breather. We all need to like decom decompression is what, you know, I don't believe in like writer's block and that type of, I think it's, I think it's all a process, right? And you're, you're, You've, in, you've, had, you've had an intake of information and now you're processing and then you decompress, right? Mm -hmm. That process of like processing and decompressing is, it, people call it writer's block and it's, it's just a yeah. process, a journey. So we need that, it's healthy. Um, sometimes we just have to learn to do it differently. You know, like having a family and being with the kids and the family all the time, it's like you yeah. really value that five minutes of, of going to get the mail or whatever, the grocery store. <laughs> but, yes, sir. But it is important, man, like in the same way when we were young and even now, I remember, I remember like one of the homies came through, we were all excited to see him way pre-quarantine, probably like two years ago or something. And then, or we went out or something like that. And when we got together, we were just silent. We were like on our phones and stuff. Yeah. But if the homie like left, even though we weren't talking, you, you kind of felt that, that deficiency, you know, he was like, I was having a good time, even though we weren't doing anything, even though no one was talking, you, you still feel that presence. I think it's the same thing that, uh, and even more so with kids and their, their parents. So sometimes they just need to see us, man. And, and uh, we're so hard on ourselves that we can't believe at times that they look up to us like they do. When you start mm -hmm. to see them repeat their behavior or it's like, I know with me, man, sometimes I just, I'm just like, it's hard to accept. And I just gotta, I have to make, all the room for that to receive that love because love is a reciprocal thing you got to give it back and it's this dance and it gets bigger and it grows but sometimes i'm like because he my, my son thinks i'm like the greatest dad you know but in my eyes sometimes I'm like i could do so much better <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's this constant we always think we can do better and i think the desire to be better just like in life is it, it signals that we are better and we're, we are growing to be better. So I think we're fine, it's where we are. Yeah, I mean, let's talk a little bit about maybe, I mean, you, we had examples in the previous generation that we borrow some things from uh, as we teach our own children, but then there's some stuff that's first in history to happen in our generation so that the playbook, you know, from, from moms and pops is not gonna work just because it's a different time. Talk to me a little bit about kind of um, some of the values that you picked up um, growing up, kind of the way that you were brought up, and then some of the new, new stuff that you, you, you just are on your own to figure out how to articulate to, to your young family uh, that you could not have been given a playbook for because it didn't exist previously. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, you know, I come from gentlemen and, and gentlewomen, you know, like it was a standard right? Like treating people well was the standard. My, my, my parents' friend used to always say to my parents, like, oh, your sons, your daughter, they're so well behaved. Your kids are so well behaved. They're so well mannered. Yeah. And I didn't really understood, stand what that meant as a child. I just knew that we're doing what we're supposed to do. <laughs> like, you don't get in, the, in a war for that. Um, somehow they gave me seven, but I'm like, okay. But, you know, we were just expected to be a certain way. And uh, I never really noticed the difference because a lot of my circle was in that same kind of mindset. Their parents, so we were raised the same. So until I went to college, I didn't really see this, you know, the stark difference in the contrast in between what we were raised under and what other people were, yeah. um, which kind of led to the journey of burial S, right? Making that, that lifestyle available to all. But, you know, I mean, treating people well understanding that people are different 
my mom was a speech pathologist before she retired. Mm -hmm. She would take us to when she would teach, you know, people with uh, students with lower IQ, students who uh, were mentally retarded, or um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's the proper, you know, speaking of, I don't even know if that's the proper. Yeah, I don't, handicap. I don't. I have no idea. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to. No. No disrespect, but um, and that's the thing. I maybe I'm probably ignorant to that, but. We, my mom always made sure that we saw different people who were different than us and, and understood them and respected them. And, you know, you get the laughs out because some things are just funny. <laughs> yeah. But then you get to understand like the person behind that. So we've always been that way. We grew up that way to be accepting, to be kind, mm -hmm. to um, maintain our own identity, right? Like my, my mom still gave us space to like be ourselves and discover who we are. And I, I kind of found that found out who I was early in life, right? I found yeah. my way early and I can see my son has that same, that same thing in him. It's amazing to watch. Um, and I think he has some of those things down, right? The differences in people. He points out, he'll, you know, there was somebody when Ava was born in February, we were in line and one of the gentlemen at the cash register was a portly gentleman, a healthy gentleman is what you would like to say, right? <laughs> Politically yes. correct. And um, my son pointed it out, man, like right in front of me. <laughs> like, like he says, hey, dad, why is that man big or something crazy or that man is big? Just something yeah. like, I, you know, I'm just like, it, it, you, I'm thinking it's reflecting on me as a father where I need to do better. And um, it was a teachable moment. I had to just snatch him up out of there and get out of there quickly. Yeah. Uh, apologize to the dude, but um I think that my son is is on the other side of what we were kind of starting. You know, um, we grew up with rotary phones in our homes, but we also had cell phones in either, you know, toward the end of middle school, beginning of high school or college, right? Like we experienced the transition and the, the rapid growth of technology, like more so than any other generation, right? Yeah. Um, at least any any uh, any generation close to us. So my son is going to, as he already knows how to use the iPad and iPhone. I remember when the iPod first came out, you know, I had the first iPod iPhone. So he's on the other side where um, things are different. There's been a lot more progress, right? The progress that a lot of us fought for, we're seeing um, a lot of uh, Generation Z fought, is fighting for, we're seeing that rapid growth and that progress. So. I mean, I, you could watch like Eddie Murphy Raw today, bro. It sounds crazy. Yes. <laughs> it sounds pretty nice to watch that as a kid, man. Like as a kid, you know, my mom will let me watch. I sneak away and watch it on HBO or whatever. But what was okay is not okay. Because it really was never okay, but we didn't know any better. Or we did know better, but we just had like uh, the, the power dynamic was just different. But that power dynamic is shifting into the hands of the people. And there are a lot of, um, there's a lot more demographic than just black, white, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area, you know, like I'm used to uh, Mexican students. And now that may sound offensive to call someone who's like, is it Hispanic, is it Latin, is it Latin, Latino, Latina, at Latinx, right? There's yeah. there yeah. new um, identifiers, qualifiers uh, that we have to, familiarize ourselves with and in, 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 in respect, right? There's a, that's all in etiquette. There's, there's, you can expect a growth. There's always been growth. We will always progress. It's those who attempt to remain <laughs> in, a, in a specific time period that kind of get left behind, right? So it's tricky because uh, as a man of faith, there are some, there's like progress and, the, and then there's what looks like progression, but it's actually regression, right? Yeah. Um, so there are ways for me as a writer and observer of, of culture to speak to those things in a way that can reach people where their ears won't be impervious so they can receive the information and, and uh, take, the, take the fat and spit out the bone. So um, there's a lot that's different, a lot that I'm adjusting to, a lot that I'm learning. Um, you know, I don't even barely give Miles a spanking. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's definitely gotten some. <laughs> And he may yeah. get a threat of one, but I, I, I hold back and pull back. I grew up on, on spankings, you know? Yep. And um, I see the benefit, right? But I also see where 
misplaced anger or misplaced aggression or mi like he's you get the telling of something that's he doesn't deserve and how that can yeah. impact him in the future so um there's a lot to consider man there's a lot of shifting a lot of change it's continuing to happen it's happening in real time now um, racism is not a conversation i expected to have this yeah, early. Man. <laughs> like my it's son my son just yesterday he was like we're bariolas we're the Bariolas, we're Team Bariola. He's like, we're black man, black man, black man. He started singing the Pharrell yeah. Jay-Z song, Black Man. And he yeah. just knows that. Like, I don't, I don't sit him down and like, you know what I'm saying? But he just observes how I move and how family moves and all the black art and all the blackness and the black books. And he just, mm -hmm. he gets that, right? He understands the value in family. We're the Bariola, he takes, takes, takes pride in that because he understands how we carry it. So, um, those are the things that I kind of want to focus on, right? And in, in taking his natural gifts and in, in, in making sure that they can exist today and in the future, like trying to, trying to help him navigate this new terrain as I navigate it as well. And he's teaching me things, you know, and I expect him to teach me things because he's closer to it. Yeah. So I just have to make sure I'm open. Yeah, keeping that eternal kind of student hat on um, I was reading an article yesterday that talked about um, how the business schools like the Ivy Leagues are um, doing away with the thought that they could charge somebody for a two to three year program and like extending these like lifelong certificates where you would kind of hop in and like pay the same way you pay for Netflix to be learning all throughout, you know, the rest of your life. And um, really, I like that. Yeah. I like that idea. It was interesting to think about. I don't know how exactly it'll be monetized and like, you know, how you uh, certify to employers and people that you want to kind of hold that up in front of. But that's that's an interesting way to look at how we are evolving and how you pick stuff up just in time. You put it down, um, you know, culture changes. You know, I've seen hip hop, you know, to your earlier point, you know, uh, there's certain words in hip hop you know, a little bit of homophobia, a little bit of, you know, hyper masculinity and uh, toxic masculinity that's been put down over the years um, to accommodate and to respect and to hold up and uplift people uh, who are marginalized and like, you know, lightweight oppressed by that. So yeah. it's been interesting yeah. to, to see kind of the progression of that and then to balance yeah. it, like you're saying, like uh, uh, man of faith, um, you've got uh, a moral set of principles and values that you live by, and you can see uh, the flaws in some of how you were raised. You can see the benefits and the, the, the discipline and like some of the stuff that gets built up in you that you use to this day because of, because of that. So um, I tell people all the time, it's like the most interesting time to be alive. Uh, I need to say my, my prayers every day to have that supernatural <laughs> uh, wisdom. I want to be the modern day Solomon, bro. Like I, I literally need to, um, I literally need help from my own family from on high and um, to lead with love, like you talked about. Yeah, yeah. So that if I say something wrong or if I do something politically incorrect, the intent and because you know me and because we have a pre existing relationship means that you won't pick up that offense immediately, but that you will extend me grace because you know kind of the type of dude that I am. You those know that I'm not trying to offend you. You know what I mean? Yeah, those, those are for the real ones. I mean, cancel culture is real. I think retribution culture is, is coming in because I, I, you, you see certain things and you just know they can't sustain. Mm -hmm. You know cancel culture can't, can't sustain because everybody's going to be canceled eventually. It's yeah, going to hit everybody, yeah. right? So... What you're saying is, what you're saying is correct, right? Like, um, but there's also the side of it where there's this, this I'm not going to say fearlessness because you may, you know, struggle with being afraid of something and, and do it anyway, but the ability to be yourself regardless, like, yeah. and to put out and to say the truth regardless, you may want to like wrap it up or, or make it soft truth or, or make it like yeah. detestable, break it up or something, but truth nonetheless, because mm -hmm. that's the charge. That's, that's, you see clear as day, which when you see pockets that, that can be 
Um, you see things that can be done better. You see things that aren't right, right? Not according, not in a judgmental way, but in a truth, in an honest way, a yeah. truth way. You know, we don't talk about reality. I always make the disconnect, the, the, uh, the, I always draw the difference between truth and reality. Like, you know, mm -hmm. truth is accepted. I mean, it's, it's true whether accepted or denied. And reality yeah. is, is, it changes with the wind. What was real yesterday, 10 years ago, isn't necessarily real today. Yeah. Reality depends on your senses. Um, truth doesn't. So there's truth. And, um, and then there's, there's a lie. And um, the truth often gets turned upside down on its head and perversion and looks like the truth because it has yeah. it rooted in it, but it's, it's, it's a lie because it's, you're looking at it the wrong. So when you reframe it, it can look crazy. When you give people truth, it could be like, Psh, what are you, what are you, you're old school, you're crazy, like yeah. you're disconnected, you're, no, nah, this is actually the truth that sustains it. It has been and will always be and is right now. You know, so there's the challenge of, stepping up and telling that and giving that and offering that truth. And sometimes the best way to give it is, is by, by covering it in love first. Yeah. And showing up. So you, the, the love is important, but you have to know that you will be challenged. You have to know that like, it won't always be like, Oh, you get the benefit of the doubt. Cause I know you, you gotta be willing to yeah. accept that if you want to be the modern day Solomon. And I'm trying to yeah. accept that and still do what I, you'll see me speak certain ways sometimes on social, whatever, like, um, I'm gonna be truthful, man. No, like, no matter how, how it looks, sometimes like, I can't make it cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it just is what it is. There are no ways yep. to dance and play with the words. It, it is what it is. But um, I'm gonna love you though. And you're gonna yeah. feel that. Without me even, you're just gonna feel that and love disarms. You love, so you can love somebody through anything. Somebody can't stay mad at you when you're loving on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they Impossible. start looking foolish. Yep. <laughs> They'll crack a <laughs> smile eventually, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, in this country, for sure, like, there's a lot of things that hurt to look at. And when you talk about truth, like, you literally, if you stare the history in the face, you're like, man, this, what this whole thing is built on Bruh. It's pretty intense and pretty, <laughs> there's a lot of adjectives that we could, we could use to describe like how we are all standing on the shoulders of uh, good people, bad people, great systems, horrible systems, like, and the legacy of all of that is the reality that yeah. a lot of us are living in today. And then yeah. to teach, to teach love first, but then understanding the history. That's why I love, like you, you've, You've got history and you've got an emphasis on uh, your culture and your family, like right there in the household, so that when people on the outside interact, there's uh, there's no there's no opportunity for somebody who's a black or brown person to be told more about themselves or be uh, spoken into um, by outside culture, where it's actually uh, detrimental. Um, to receive validation from the outside as opposed to getting it from the inside and kind of walking with confidence as yeah. you leave leave the covering of um, of safety. So it's, it's it's a lot, man. I've been trying to process it. And it's been, again, forced in this year, like where you have to think through a lot of stuff that maybe the day job might have keep keep your mind in a certain place and you, you, you put it on the back burner or you put it on the bucket list. But this year, yeah. man, uh, growing at a rapid at a rapid clip. And ask yourself why, right? Why would you? Why would the world need to grow at a rapid rate? Why would people need to grow, or not, or die at a rapid rate? That tell like you forecast. You think, okay, something. There's something to come. You're being prepared for something. You don't just grow. Like, yeah. oh, I'm just gonna just like really get past all of this and grow. You know what I mean? Like, for what? No, there's something coming. Yes. If you don't feel that, like I felt it for before 2020. I mean, I felt it when I was, I felt it since a kid, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Right. And that thing that I feel allows me to tap into people and, and connect and relate and understand and speak for and speak with um, and learn from and speak to. So we have that exchange and, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that 
Um, and I'm actually appreciating that folks are still trusting um, where I'm taking them, like where we're going. Yeah. You know what I mean? On this beautiful journey of life and, and enjoying, taking the scenic route and enjoying the whole journey of it, right? And, yeah. and not, not harping on reality, because when you do, that's, that's when you get stuck. Yeah, let's, let's, reality is going to change. If you stay stay there on it, it's going to just, it's going to take you to your grave and probably take you there sooner than you should have got, you should have arrived, right? Yeah. Um, you'll get stressed out looking at reality. You'll get sick. You'll get uh, frustrated. You'll become apathetic. Mm -hmm. You know, like your heart condition will change. It'll be difficult to love. Like it's impossible. But when you focus on truth you know that what is presented as reality isn't true so even when you look at our history as, as horrible as our history is and the fact that like we are who we are we know who we are and we know where we're going yeah that's true right i'm not focused on the battle fam <laughs> battles are yeah. won battles are lost but there's wars right like the Warriors, the year they went crazy, they lost a few games, <laughs> but they won. <laughs> they won the whole thing, man. They won the yeah. whole thing, and and like, I'm not gonna call like our past a game. It, it's it, it it informs who we are. It, but there's a reason that our past is our past. There's a reason that um, we were held back. That greatness in us, the the, the it was it was attempted to stifle, they tried to stifle it, they tried to stop it, they continue, it's impossible, you can't, it's impossible. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't, you're, you're fighting against, against God, you can't. So, um, I didn't mean to take it this far, but <laughs> I'll just say that we are who we are and where we're going is guaranteed and who's in our corner who is leading us is, is eternal. And that's all true. Anything else is reality. Yep, and it, when you have a vision for kind of what's gonna happen in the war, I think it makes living through reality yes. uh, a lot more manageable, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> experience peace, that's how you can like, that's how you can give love, because you're coming, you're, you're, you're filling yourself up with it. If you're focused on reality, you're, you're, you're rotting on the inside. It's yeah. dead and death and destruction and it's, it's sin is dirty. It's, it's, it's eating you away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to tap back in and try to find your way again. But when you, when you can at least attempt to really face truth and focus on truth, then, man, there's, there's some freedom and some peace in that, man. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing for everybody, you know, who's listening into this and watching this. Like, um, I think your ability to help other people who are um, in the ambiguity of reality, um, your level of helpfulness, it increases. So it's just a beautiful thing to be able to help somebody else. And if you're the, the shepherd of a family, too, like, it's the same um, metaphor, right? You know, a, a, a child, a toddler will get in a tizzy over something that in the grand scheme of things one is detrimental to their own health and safety and two doesn't matter like one bit so you as the person who's clearer thinking and has like longer term um, views on that can shepherd can act can intervene can do everything that you're supposed to do to continue that little sapling or that little you know, son or daughter down the growth path and down the development path. So it's, it's um, something to ponder over for sure, but, you know, definitely something that I have peace about and something that is an opportunity uh, to be able to look back once you've got your oxygen mask going to be able to help the next man, help the next woman for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We did it, man. We, we made it, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. thank God. And, and, and that's a, that's a, an honor and a privilege. And, and we are, um, we made it for a reason. Yeah. So let me let me ask you about um, you mentioned taking your your the people who've been rocking with you for a minute, like on a journey, like as you've grown and developed. Yeah. Um, talk about like 
entrepreneurship and like when you talk about vision and having an idea for like where you want to go but then also being sensitive to the feedback and wanting to um, offer something that's helpful like in the moment like how do you reconcile the longer term vision with the uh, these are what the fans and people who know me and the folks that have rocked with me up until this point like there's a a little yeah. bit of many tension in that probably a big tension man it's tough like the decision for me to like really tell the truth like mm -hmm. to be because you can tell it up to a point and people you know you give it to them in doses that they, they can take and you make it humorous or witty so you're giving the truth but they yeah. can accept it when you start kind of like <laughs> you know getting up in people's homes and getting like up in their soul and really taking a look around <laughs> it gets uncomfortable yeah you know, and, and I have the ability to see, see, see truth, <laughs> right? Like, um, it's a, it's a gift, man. I, you know, you can see it and you can see the opposite as well. And, uh, you can see it in people's eyes. You can hear it in their, in their tone. You can see it in your spirit. It's, it's just a very interesting phenomenon. It's an interesting experience, but, um, knowing that there's a charge that is very specific to your purpose that you feel you feel that tug you feel that that pull to another level you're being called for more you're being called mm -hmm. for greater and you feel it and sometimes you entertain it and other times you don't but when you don't you feel it too mm -hmm. and it feels worse than you actually entertaining it because Entertaining it is like you're leaving behind something that was yeah. great, something that, that worked, right? And that the people loved. You're leaving that behind, but you're taking them where you were going anyway. That was just a stop mm -hmm. on the journey. Some people might fall off and catch it later. Some people just might fall off, but it's not my responsibility mm -hmm. to like save everybody or to like, I'm not even considered, I'm not a savior, but to even my responsibility, my purpose is my purpose. My, 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 my goal is to do it. My goal is obedience, not results. Yeah. You know, we get so caught up and think it's our job to save people. Like, like we're the savior, like they're looking to us, like we're the resource or we're the, like we're the source and not the resource. Right. Yeah. And that's where it can become conflated. And if, if you're so attached to that idea that's rooted in ego, then it's gonna, you're gonna have a harder time elevating to the next stage. Because mm -hmm. ego may convince you that it got you up that mountaintop. And if you tell it that you don't need it anymore, it's gonna try to take you back down. Yeah. But the second you can free yourself from it, um, and what that looks like is friends that you had 30 year relationships are no longer, you can no longer keep going with them. How do you even share that? How do you tell them, mm -hmm. right? Um, family members, right? Things you used to do. You're still, you're growing, you're, you're leaving the old ways behind, right? And that's the tough part. Um, will I leave these audience, like the fam behind? Will I, will I leave behind people that I've been rocking with? Am I talking to over their heads? Am I going too deep? Is it too much? Am I, is it too much love? Is it, you know, like yeah. is it too much family? Is it too, I don't care about none of that. That's not my concern. I'm not gonna allow the idea of too much love to get in the way of loving people, to get in the way of giving more love, to get in the way of giving too much love. Yeah. I'm not gonna allow like uh, a, a drop in followers after posting uh, family or posting something like hitting home a message to like deter me from doubling down on that message. Yeah. Because if you're not ready, I do want you to go, right? Like if you're not ready and not willing, don't come where I'm going. Don't yeah. come where I'm, I'm rolling. But if you're ready, let's go, cause I'm going. And you'll catch on eventually. And if you don't, it wasn't supposed to be me. That's fine. Yeah. It's There's a lot of people out here, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people to be used, a lot of vessels. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, <laughs> Yeah, I gotta take you there as long as you get there. Yeah, I've seen a few artists um, that I follow. I'm like a, a hobbyist drummer and keyboardist, and a, and a few of these folks 
uh, this year have come out and said, hey, you know, as a black artist, I haven't personalized this kind of stuff on social media before, but like, if you have no empathy or sympathy for what you've seen this summer, like if it does nothing uh, for you or that you, you don't feel anything, um, I invite you like to unfollow me like right now. Like I, you, you can enjoy my music, but to enjoy the fruits of my craft yeah. while choosing to uh, turn a blind eye to like yeah. my, my humanity and my community is better. Ooh, it's yeah. better for me to know that you just like deaded me. Like you, you just, we are separate and I'm fine with that. You know, I might lose just like you're saying for a season and maybe you come back around and you understand um, much more than you do in the current moment. But that was such a powerful thing um, for me to see a couple of, of drummers that I follow um, posted stuff like that. And um, another thing I was thinking, go ahead. No, just like, let me see the knife in your hand. You know, like, yeah, you trying to come behind my back. Like, let me know that it's there and make a decision based off the fact that you got a knife in your hand and you're approaching me. Yeah, and even even like apathy and silence and like non-action. Same thing, bro. The knife of non-action, fam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, like indecision is a decision, it's, it's right? Like being like, not speaking up, not saying anything, not moving like that, it, you're, you're showing your, your and we're all guilty of that. I'm not here to point fingers. We've all like sat still in plenty of situations. We should have said something. Yeah. Should have said the right thing or just something. Like we we face that all the time. So um, we we also have to again because I, this is me going back and forth between my righteousness and my religion. And I don't even like the term religion my faith, mm. my truth, right? Um, you also got to give people grace, you know? You also got to give people grace and we don't put people on a timeline as to when they should get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, you saw this, so you should get it. There's a whole story of that human that we don't know, right? Sometimes you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't just, you could see watch the news and hear about death and it doesn't impact you, right? Yeah. Until maybe some, somebody in your fam and then there's something, right? And then you understand that the empathy's there. But um, as a man of faith and as a somebody that, that has to stand on what I stand on, I also say like, again, in the, in the love conversation, we, we also, you don't have to, you can love from afar, you don't have to, you know what I mean? But love is love, right? like love is yeah. important and sustaining and it's all we got and all that matters. So, um, those are opportunities to love when we don't get it. The people who need love the most show it in the most unloving ways. So when you're not getting that, it's not being reciprocated, that thing you're giving, give more of it or just give it from a distance, but, but don't relinquish your supply. Don't cut your, yourself off. Don't cut your arm off. You're cutting your head off when you don't, when you don't love. Like it's yeah. flowing through you. You stop that flow, you ain't getting it either. You yeah. know, so it's a, it's a very reciprocal thing and, and that's the way that it works. And that's why you don't see a lot of it because those who are hurt stop loving. They, they, they stop, they lose the capacity. Well, they think they lose the capacity. It's there, there's a blockage there. Just gotta remove that block, which they gotta forgive. They gotta remove that hate. They gotta remove that pain of somebody not acknowledging their, their struggles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's tough. Like I go back and forth all the time. I'm very, but I'm also very, and this always wins. This yeah. always wins because there's a there's reality and there's truth. Yeah, open hands uh, can do a lot more more than this. Uh, and there's use usefulness in both. But oh, I'm, I'm totally yes. I'm totally that's, with you. That's a double <laughs> entendre, man. You're out there throwing bars, you know what I'm saying? Because that means that's, that literally means like you know this is this is the power, but that's also the power. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is like the receiving and the the um, sovereignty and like the, the surrender, you know? Oh man, this conversation, you know, it's, it's, 
I love chatting with you because it's, it opens me up in ways that allows me to go places that maybe I haven't gone or consider things. It, it, it's, it's helpful. You know? I'm hoping that everybody who's watching, you know, gets a little bit. And um, I think inspiration and these kinds of conversations are um, the types of things that I think folks need to start getting used to having. So yeah. even as you watch us, you know, start to think to yourself, like, how can I have this kind of conversation with the person that I need to talk to that I've never done this with? So hopefully we're modeling something that folks would be able to, you know, not only like learn and laugh and you know, ponder over, but like, use it yourself, like do it. You'll be a better human being. You'll be a better father. You'll be a better citizen. And, Bro, um, you know, that'll start <laughs> the revolution, you know? No, that's it. It's funny, dude. You just said something so profound. You said, you said that'll start the revolution, but you gave such a simple solution to a revolution, right? Like learn how to speak openly and honest with your brother, with your sister, mm -hmm. with each other, right? That provides a way to rid yourself of um, the blockages that are holding you up and, and stopping you and preventing you from living this life. And it opens you up as you give that illustration for, for love to, to give it and to receive it. So this conversation is a channel to like, to love, right? It's like, a, it's yeah. a pathway to love. And um, that's the greatest revolution. <laughs> it's a love revolution. It's like to, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. No, the hippies joined from the seventies. I'm talking about like a real love revolution, man, the revival. And um, it can start with something as simple as this. Yeah. And that's the whole reason I write. That's the whole reason I do everything I to, to, to really bring things like really dilute them down to one simple truth or one simple action or one, like make it very plain to somebody, right? Like communicate in a way that's so effective and so clear that if you do this thing, your life can, it can open up the pathway to really impacting your life and, and changing your whole world around. So um, that was so well said. I don't know if you even caught that. <laughs> but I the probably did not watch the really recording. Good. And check it out. <laughs> it drew, you drew it's, it's 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 a simple act with a profound outcome. Mm. And um, man, if we could live our lives like that, like this is one thing. It's like riding a bike. You do this, you do more of yeah. this, talking, being open. Then you start to process what was said and, and consider it and put that into action and, you know, start to see things change around you and the way that you treat people and the way you yeah. interact and the way you treat yourself and the things you tell yourself and the things you consume and what you believe and, you know, you continue to feed that and, and um, it, it changes you entirely, man. There's no reason I should be sitting here smiling on December 23rd, 2020. Yeah. Or, it's, I'm sorry, uh, whatever date this is. <laughs> There's no reason I should be sitting here smiling in December of 2020 because yeah. it was a, the hardest year of my life in one of the yeah. best years of my life. Because sometimes like working out is hard, right? Sometimes. Sometimes working out is hard. <laughs> sometimes struggling to get that weight off, is, uh, off you is hard. Sometimes leaving that thing behind is hard. Sometimes accepting your, your truth and your path and your destiny is hard, but thank God for it, man. Thank God for the ability to have that stuff up off you and go yeah. and fly and be free. Whew. Muscle. Muscles don't grow. If you're not uh, if you're not struggling at some point, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we we got. I mean, there's so many gems in here. Um, maybe we do a little bit of a lightning round and oh. um, you know, like end on a on a note where people get to know uh, what you like to eat, where you like to travel, what video yeah. games you play, like all this kind of stuff. First oh. of all, Bay Area. Uh, we had an interesting. Uh, versus battle. <laughs> oh man, I was out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yo, man, that, that was that was my childhood in front of me. Like I grew up on that stuff. It was crazy to know that, like, so many people around the world were experiencing what was so intimate and personal. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking to myself, like, how many closet, um, how many people are like in their closets going dumb, like for this oh, whole. Man. 
that was a that was a Bay Area moment. This My son saw another side of me. He was it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> he starts dancing too. It was it was cool, man. Nice. It was it was a family affair. And the dope part about it is I could sit right down afterwards. I didn't have to be in no club. I had to be out. Mm -hmm. Sit right down, wait for the next song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's super cool. So let's um let's talk a little bit about, let's see, for first lightning round question, I, I usually start with food. So Cuisine, um, big part of everybody's life. Um, maybe a couple of genres of cuisine that you uh, and the family like to chow down on. Yeah, man, I like Nigerian. My dad's Nigerian, so you know I love Nigerian dish. Um, I love seafood. You know, mm -hmm. I love some good uh, some good steamed mussels and. Mm -hmm. um, Man, I love all types of fish. My wife cooks very well. She makes like some really good, healthy medleys of veggies. Like, I like like a bowl of like veggies and like a power protein bowl with some cauliflower rice and you know what I'm saying? Some peanuts and just like stuff that fuels me and makes me feel like it's making me, it's improving me as a person, like my mind yeah. and my body and you know, like stuff that, I like good, healthy food, man. No, I feel you. You look, you look great. Um, probably gonna live a long time. So, uh, everybody out there, you know, taking care of yourself. Um, self care starts with nutrition. Starts with sleeping. Starts with. I mean, Yo, we can go a whole another hour to talk about that. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta shout out T and shout out to to, to Hella T in Oakland. But mm -hmm. um, no, T is my jam, bro. Like I just, I drink way too much tea and a lot of water. Like a lot of tea and a lot of water is my jam. Yeah. Yeah, let's move to, um, I mean, 2020, kind of a year where people picked up a lot of stuff, put down a lot of stuff. What are some like hobbies or some regimens or some maybe apps you found or things that you just like, oh, you know, if this year wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have this or this or this as part of my daily routine. Man, diversifying the heck out of my portfolio. Um, I collected so much black art from the beginning of quarantine mm. to now, just like tapped all the way in, man. And it's been a, it's been a beautiful journey. I've always wanted to get into it. I've always yeah. been a part of art, right? Like, I mean, so many things I do um, are integrated in art uh, and baptized in art, but mm -hmm. I never, I always like to respect the craft. So art for sure, um, stocks, you know, um, venture, um, angel investing, uh, toning down my whole vibe for the next phase that I'm entering has been fun, mm -hmm. you know? Cause I'm like, I'm like corporate on top, party on bottom or party on bottom. Yeah. Corporate on top. I always add some sort of element of like my own vibe to, to something, you know, that's more mm -hmm. refined, but I'm, I'm pulling back and toning down a lot of how I present. Yeah. And uh, in preparation to make sure that, again, like there's a sovereignty and there's a certain respect for where we're going. So, mm -hmm. uh, man, like it, that's part of the shedding and part of the growing has been like literally building art yeah. collecting, stocks, investing. Like, I love that. And this is all kind of like more new to me, but mm -hmm. um, I'll double down on it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I um, learned a bunch about kind of stocks and real estate and when hey, you, when you, rap, bro. When, yeah, when, you rap, sit, <laughs> when you sit in one place for such a long time you start to pick up new like opportunity like you're not going nowhere and so your commute is cut down all so all that time for this year been able to uh channel and redirect and uh just i feel like i've been getting a, a covid education this year just by virtue of having the time that i used to you know waste or spend in a different way so um you know, another like silver lining for this year, but you want to shout do. out, uh, yeah, we got what we need. Like a lot of times yeah. we don't ever want what we need, but finally we're in position where we do, but usually we need what yeah. we want, but we're finally in position where we, the most of us, we finally realize we want what we need. Or we want what we need, right? We yeah. desire what we need, which is rare. So that's what we, we got, what we came for, man. Yeah. Tell the people what's behind you uh, since we talked about art. Man, that's Skylar Gray. Uh, I got a few Skylar Gray original pieces, man. My son has one in his room. My daughter has one in her room. Um, but he's a 20-year-old kid from, 
from uh, from Los Angeles, and he has a really unique story. He started painting when he was like 12 years old, and has work around the world. And uh, Forbes 30 under 30 artist, um, only artist to paint a Lamborghini that sold for like 1.5 million or something. Oh, He's doing. Yeah. He has a new exhibit uh, right now in Avant Gallery in Miami, and. Uh, He's just a brilliant kid, man. He's working on some some sculptures that I'm I'm absolutely gonna get. Uh, love that kid, man. He's he's talented. He, he's that's one of my favorite artists for sure. He's a, a prodigy, a legend. Nice, Skylar Gray. Um, check that out, ladies and gentlemen. If you've not heard of this young brother, um, doing sure. some great things out there. Um, let's talk a little bit about kind of uh, child culture. Uh, any like your son, for example, any favorite activities or hobbies or things? Uh, I, I know my kids love books. They love their yeah. Nintendo Switch. They like gaming a little bit. They, you know, what's the, uh, what is bliss? What is Nirvana for uh, for your young son? <laughs> All of it. And the thing that I really love is he, he, there's a resurgence of the things that we loved from the 80s and the 90s that is, that is kind of coming to to be in, he likes that stuff. I mean, he plays, we played Double Dragon together on the Nintendo, fam. No. <laughs> I mean, Enemy Contra, like we're playing yes. and stuff and he's good at it. It's weird, you know, like I was good at video games. You know, we played basketball in the house together. Yeah. Uh, he's, he totally loves outside. He loves reading, going to the library, you know, like mm -hmm. a lot of, um, he reads a lot of, a lot of books, learning about his own culture. Mm -hmm. um, characters have his skin color. Um, he loves music, so he yeah. loves to dance and sing. So we'll watch YouTube. I try to limit it. Sometimes the iPad's a savior. Sometimes it's the worst thing ever. But yeah. uh, he loves Sonic the Hedgehog. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's interesting that um, we're kind of able to relive these moments through our kids and with our kids, not through them, but with them, to ex yeah. experience these things that we thought were gone forever. And it's it's cool, man. I enjoy that he's not so focused on like technology, it's just all tech, 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 tech. He's, I mean, not technology, but being just embedded with the, de with the device on him um, yeah. or having a, a device embedded on him. He's, he's, he loves being out there and, and feeling air on his face and going on a boat and all that type stuff. Like he's mm -hmm. into that vibe and he's only five years old, man. He's got great taste. That's amazing. I mean, it's Obviously, uh, Dad like is a doing game. a great job pushing it down. <laughs> he'll, be like, he'll, he'll look at me and check out something I'm wearing. Like, yo, I, he'll tell me what he likes that I'm wearing. You know, like he'll pick out stuff sometimes. I wear these, or he picks out his own clothes. He's like organizes. He organizes toys by color today because my closet I organize it by color. He's just yeah. And I used to organize his food when he was a baby by color, and I would like mm -hmm. it was all symmetric and like really artistic, and he's just. It's crazy, man. When you pour into them, sometimes I guess they pour back out. Yeah, start them off when they're young. I mean, when are they? I, I forget the statistics, but like when they're still forming, their capacity yeah. to take all of these inputs and like turn them into beautiful outputs is uh, amazing, man. They're whew. artists. They're artists. They're the creators from the from the creator, man. And it's 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 all it's all we. I don't know why we act like parenting is not a. It's a miracle, bro. Like it's the it's the the whole thing is like, it, it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's just a miracle, man. You make love, like you see the whole progress, your stomach's getting bigger, you've witnessed this miraculous birth, like how did this even happen? And then it's this person and they're you and they're not, they're their own person, they're your, your, your partner as well, they're like their own spirit, but then they're your father, your mother, your grandmother, you start seeing down the line, they, they, it's just this, but it's it's they start talking like you and, and and dressing and doing and but then they're their own spirit, but it's a very familiar spirit. It's just how do we act like it's not a miracle? Like it's not amazing, bro. Like how do you contain yourself having a child? Yeah. I was the deck I mean at least <laughs> that's a perfect segue into the next and in like the last lightning round question I was gonna ask you was about um New Year's resolutions and one of mine is to uh, I think Jesus told us to kind of like see things through the eyes of a child, like be, be like children. And one of the things that you just brought up is just like how important it is to be able to change your perspective and get low and see things kind of in a new way. Yeah. So that's one of mine for 2021. Um, 
one, are you a fan of New Year's resolutions? And then two, if you are, you got any like any on the horizon for 2021 coming up? I'll say I'm not a fan of people like banking on them um, and, and acting like today isn't a new year. You know what I'm saying? Like right now is like waiting, delaying, stalling um, what's already yours. Um, it doesn't make sense to like, all right, I got two weeks to, I'm gonna wait to start. <laughs> yeah. Unless you really need to or something, right? Unless you need to take a breather. But I'm also not a fan of like people who just like down them and criticize them entirely because it's somebody that's, that's giving, putting forth effort, even though the gym yeah. membership like be packed on January 1st, January 2nd, but come like into January, ain't nobody up in that gym. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't have a I don't have a resolution. Maybe I have a resolve, right? Um, and I've started that already. Mm -hmm. You know, like I resolved to um, set myself and my family up for the best present and future. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're doing. We've been doing, but we're really doubled down on it. And uh, the journey's beautiful. And I've, I've resolved to be present on this journey because it's easy to go. In. I used to be a futurist. I was always in the future forecasting, yeah. seeing what's up, coming back, bringing it back. But you can never experience the fruits of your labor and the joy of the now when you're always over there. Or I didn't really look back. I only, I only go back to go get something and bring it, you know what I'm saying? Like some idea, some thought or something. But um, being present is, is difficult, but it's beautiful. And there's tools you can yeah. use to practice to be. Um, but I learned to take it day by day this year, man. And that's a cliche yeah. statement and you always hear it and it is what it is and you know what it means, but until you really know what it means and you accept taking it day by day, like you're not even, you plan for tomorrow and do that, like really, really like living that word, like taking it day by day and knowing that there's enough in that day and you're missing it by projecting yourself into the future and presenting, bringing worries into the future. Because when you do that, God ain't with you in that projection. You're not, you're not, you're, that's you. Yep. I'm like being a futurist. That's just me out there. I'm not thinking about God. I'm just thinking about me. And of course I'm coming up short. Of course I'm scared. Of course, because I'm not even yeah. considering. You know I need crazy to thing. right here, man, right now. Cause there's a lot that's here and it's easier to deal with the day than it is to try to deal with the year today. I ain't dealing with 2020 today. Like all the 20, I'm not dealing with, I'm dealing with December, whatever day it is. I'm not dealing yeah. with like January 1st today. I can think about it, plan and, but I'm not, I'm dealing with, my son is asleep. It's amazing that I'm in the place that I'm in. Like I got a scholar, great piece behind me. I'm able to talk with you. I've done enough work to be talking with you about this, right? Like I've, I've, done, I've amassed enough accomplishments to put myself in position to communicate to you which is gonna be broadcast to the people and be able to like engage on the, on the love and the life that is here. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the presence that we're experiencing now, people can now like in a later time experience the, this present moment, this presence that I'm after. Yeah. They can have that, you know I mean? They're, they're, and I can only give it by being present. I can't be distracted right now. I have to submit and surrender to this moment with you because it's God designed. This moment was planned, this, this moment was written. So I gotta honor it. That's what being present is. Every conversation, yeah. every interaction, every being right there, being present, they feel that, people feel that. That's how you connect. That's true. Yeah. Don't get me started, uh, man. My, my, <laughs> my, my uh, lightning round is like five minutes. <laughs> no, no, man, I was, I mean, there's so much there. And to trip off of kind of that futurism versus now, like we have had all that we've needed for a long time. I think about this all the time where all the resources in the world um, could be put to use today to feed all the people, to house all the people. Everything. But the fact, that, the fact that people are storing stuff in their barns for 10 years down the line, or like it's, it's crazy uh, to trip off of how accurate that manna concept live in today. Like don't don't focus too far down the line and just to see all around kind of the ramifications of people getting that wrong 
and like its consequences. <sighs> and then you believe in the power of the word and you understand the word. And you know, it's not just a set of rules and regulations to regulate and control my life and make me not have fun. No, man, it's like, the, it's like gives you life. It allows you to live life in a way that's like, like this is, it's living, like you, you feel something. We look at like, I don't know about you, I look in the Old Testament, I'd be judging like, dang, they ain't get it right yet. You gotta, yeah. keep, like, they, they keep getting destroyed and rebuilt and destroyed and re, like, what the heck? Why do they keep turning against God? Like, and I'm like, wait a minute, that looks real familiar. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, that's you every single day, fam. It's yep. crazy, right? So, um, bro, like the, the instruction is there. Truth is there. Like the answer is everything. It's there. It's it's our it's us, man. It's our mind. It's the, it's what we believe. Yeah. So I didn't even mean to go into all of that. We are for sure gonna have to talk to the people about some more things in the future. <laughs> but uh, while while I got you, man, I just want to give you your flowers and. Um, appreciate you for all of the grind and all of uh, the output, like the books, the raising of the standard of kind of how black and brown people are seen out there in the public eye, um, the content of your speech and what you talk about and the seeds that you're planting for the next generation and how you're leading uh, by example with your own family. Um, our whole, on behalf of our whole community, you know, I, I give you a salute and um, just thank you for for making time to have a conversation like this that I know for sure will bless a lot of people. And, you know, who knows? They, people might come back and be like, oh, y'all talking about investments. Why didn't you double click on that? Are you talking about real estate? Why you ain't? So we might have to get back together and uh, yo, let's keep something talking in together, man. I'm, <laughs> yo, I'm with it, yo. And um, no, nah, it's, it's, it's an honor, man. It's, it's really an honor to, to, uh, to be able to um, be in a position to just be true, man. I encourage everybody out there to just like, it's your best, man. Just just try to be true, man. Like, if you can't look at yourself in the mirror um, at length, like really look at yourself, if you start getting uncomfortable, then uh, there's some immediate surface work to do. That's the first sign. Uh, you can't really be true and you can't enjoy these type of conversations. And you gotta get to a place where you know that the person next to you is going through or has gone through exactly what you are. And we're all in the same, yeah. together. we're all on the same plane, Ain't nobody higher. You know, some have more experience, more that doesn't change who they are and, and where they're going. So, um, yeah, man, let's just continue to lead with love and let's, let's, let's give that effort. Let's attempt, let's try. You're going to get it wrong in trying. Like yeah. I tell my son, you'll eventually get it right. You know, yep. I took his training wheels off yesterday. It was a whole mess, but he'll eventually get it right. Yeah, literally be riding that bike and forget he ever had training wheels. So just keep, keep, keep trying to love, keep trying to be true, trying to lean toward truth, trying to lean toward what appears to be something to be afraid of. Um, that's always the sign that that's exactly where you need to go. Amen to that, man. That's a perfect place to leave it um, to the community and everybody rocking with us. Um, thank you so much for checking this out uh never forget the truth will set you free and perfect love casts out all fear so um with, with that said let's just roll into this next year uh focusing on truth focusing on love man and um brother anytime we will we will connect for sure and give the people a little bit more uh in the months to come Seth, man i appreciate you brother I really do all right well be safe uh stay sane and safe out there and uh until next time uh, enjoy the holiday season and um, thank Christmas. you again on behalf of holiday season, Christmas, New Year coming up um, for everybody watching. We acknowledge that there's lots of holidays, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's about to be popping this uh, this Christmas for us and we're excited about what next year has to bring. So on behalf of the community, brother, we appreciate you. Thank you. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And we'll see you soon. <laughs> I'm going to do a little. <laughs> All right, fam. All right, brother. Peace.